Welcome everybody. It's a Saturday afternoon, um, 3.30, and we're absolutely delighted that you're all joining us here, and particularly delighted that Anida and her fellow presenters are here, ready to talk about their exciting projects. Um, I'm Helen Myers, I'm Chair of the London Branch of the Association for Language Learning, and we're really happy as an association to host these webinars, which are brilliantly organised by Joe Dale. Joe, would you like to say some words? I'd love to, Helen. Thank you ever so much. What a lovely, lovely, lovely um, Saturday afternoon um, to be learning all about um, some ideas around languages and a fantastic project, which we're really, really excited to hear about. But uh, before we um, before we start um, introducing our lovely presenters, uh, a little bit about me. So I'm an independent languages consultant. I normally um, travel around the world running training on the use of technology and languages here, there and everywhere. But of course, I can't do that now because of the, the pandemic. So I have to do all my um, all my work through webinars. So in the chat, as um, per normal, I put in 18 example sessions that I can offer uh, around hybrid and remote teaching context. Anything you'd like some help with, um, let me know. And I would love to support the school uh, or the district or whoever might be listening to this right now. Over to you, Helen. Thanks, Joe. Um, Association for Language Learning. Please, please do join us. If you're not a member, please join us. Um, use the chat now to tell us, tell everybody if you are a member and to encourage people to join in. Um, if you join us, then you get a lovely glossy magazine that's three times a year, but most importantly, you're part of a community um, and really the money that you pay goes towards having a, a small team of people who are able to keep their eye on what's going on in the languages world and be your voice or help you to articulate your voice. So it'd be great if you could join us. We've got lots of other webinars coming up as well, I'm just going to go through them now. So even though it's the spring break for a lot of people, we have got teachers who are willing to give up their break and their Saturdays to help us, which is great. So Thursday the 8th, we're having part two of telling us how to use Canva. That went down really, really well, our first one. We've got Sarah Bell, who's coming next Saturday. Um, so that'd be great to see her then. Ellie coming Thursday the 15th of April. A bit more, if you like, serious stuff is the uh, uh, GCSE proposals. We're going to be talking on Thursday, the 22nd of April, but then back to fun again with West Fryer on the 24th of April. And even into May, we've got things planned, which is great. So thank you so much, Joe, for finding all of this talent mm -hmm. and putting them our way. Um, all of the webinars are listed on our website with links to recordings and chat and anything anybody wants to share with us. So I'm going to stop now and I'm going to pass over to Joe to do the introductions. Fantastic. So we're absolutely delighted to have um, uh, Aneda and friends uh, today. We've got uh, Arno and uh, Zoe uh, joining uh, the session this afternoon. And I saw Aneda uh, speak uh, live for the first time at the uh, Creative Multilingualism event in London in February 20, 2019, it would have been, I think. It seems a long, long time ago now. Uh, and I was really, really blown away by her presentation um, around uh, translanguaging and all the work she was doing um, uh, with, uh, with her, the, the primary schools in the local area. It was really, really inspiring. And I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for us to learn uh, all about the project because I'm sure it'd be something that we could um, try to replicate in our own in our own context wherever we may be. So uh, we're really really, really delighted that you've uh, agreed to do this. All three of you as well. Originally we just had an Ada. Now we've got all three of you. So it's really fantastic. So I'll hand over to you, uh, an Ada, if that's okay to to kick us off, and then we'll have all the questions at the end as well, um, if that's okay. So if you do have a question, put the question in the chat with a queue in front of it. I'll collect all the questions as normal, and then we'll have. X number of minutes at the end for the Q&A. So over to you, Anaida, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Well, likewise, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. For me, I've been following Joe for a long, long time. He, he as an expert, as a person who knows everything about <laughs> software, about the <laughs> Indeed, when we met in person in London, I told you that it was really, you know, kind of I'm meteor stars. No, oh, thank <laughs> you. Moment. So I'm really pleased that uh, and an honor that you have invited us, and also super delighted uh, to have Zoe and Arno uh, co-presenting uh, co -presenting, uh, the project with me. What we are doing with this uh, all the world is our stage uh, now fully online due to to the pandemic. So I'm going to start by sharing my my screen. Uh, with you and share sound. Yeah, that's great. 
Okay. So we're very excited. Uh, can you can you see the screen? Yes, we can. All good. Excellent, because now I, I'm, I'm completely blind. So um, this project, uh, Creative Multilingualism uh, project, um, has brought us a lot of joy, but we have also had to be very flexible with the current situation. And I think that what I can certainly say is that it has nourished a long lasting uh, love for languages that we can uh, still flavor today. So what can I tell you about that? Let me contextualize it a little bit for you. Uh, the, the, con the context of our project is now online due to the restrictions and the lockdown and the pandemic. And I'm currently, so I'm Aneida Garcia Villanova. I'm from the School of Modern Languages and Cultures at the University of Glasgow. And I have the pleasure to be uh, taking over uh, well, taking over now, I, I carry out this project uh, with two primary schools, with Springfield uh, Primary School and with Cowdenbeath Primary School. These are two very different uh, schools that I'm working with. Springfield is located in an affluent area of the central belt of Scotland, and we could say it's predominantly monolingual while Cowdenbeath um, is located in a non-affluent area of the east coast of Scotland, and we could say it's a nurture school, and it is predominantly multilingual. So in total, we have five participating classes, four from Springfield and one from Cowdenbeath, and we will tell you more about it as we go along with the presentation. Before we do that, um, it's important for those of you who are not so familiar with the Scottish context, in Scotland, since 2012, we do have the one plus two approach to language learning. This is a approach to language learning based or inspired in the Barcelona Agreement, and it advocates for two additional languages to be taught and learned in school in addition to the home of schooling, to the, to the language of schooling, apologies, uh, language of schooling. In Scotland, uh, the language of schooling can be either English or it can be Scottish Gaelic. So what happens is that from P1 to P7, uh, which is the, which equals your reception and up to year six, pupils do learn a second language. So this second language that we call the L2, is the language that they will also have the opportunity to learn when, the, when they transition to secondary education. So that is guaranteed. The pupils, the Scottish pupils who start with a language in P1 or in your reception years will continue with it up until the end of broad general education, which is the third year of secondary. Then from P5 or year four in the English education system, pupils do take on an additional language and they do this language for three years. This is the L3 and the L3 may or may not be available for them when they transition to secondary education. So um, following up this, this project was originally run, run as a pilot project uh, at small scales, with scale with a school in a, in a more rural area of Scotland. And then there were plans for the project to be rolled out at a larger scale, but then COVID hit us and with COVID restrictions and with restriction uh, lockdown. So here Zoe, I know all my, and myself were very bold and decided to continue with the project and moving it fully online. By moving it fully online, I mean that even the initial meetings, everything has happened in the virtual context in the virtual world. I have not met the teachers that, uh, apart from Zoe and, and Arnaud, uh, who, whom I met in the, in, at the Scottish Parliament, I will tell you a bit, uh, about it a bit later as well. The other teachers I haven't met in person, the pupils I haven't met uh, in person um, either. And the other novelty is the fact that we do have a P1 P2 class uh, joining the project, which was not uh, planned initially. Indeed, the project was meant to be uh, or to start with pupils from P2 onwards. But there is this class in Springfield who were really keen on uh, participating and, uh, and we took them on board as well. So the aims of the, of the project are supporting teaching practice. And this means alleviating teachers' workloads. And very importantly, placing the pupils at the center of their learning journey. It promotes collaborative work in different ways. It's collaborative work, pupil with pupil, pupil with teacher, 
teachers with families, <laughs> pupils with families, and of course, cross-sectorial collaboration with higher education or with secondary if the performance goes over when the pupils have already started high skill. From a research point of view, I was very interested in embedding translanguaging in mainstream education. And of course, um, under the social justice and inclusive umbrella, what we really wanted was to raise awareness about multilingualism and, and celebrate heritage community or home languages. I don't know how you would like to call them. That is a bit political, so I'm not gonna go into that. But by that I mean those languages that our pupils learn, um, speak at home, but they don't learn in the, in, the, in, in the school context. So those languages that traditionally don't make it to the curriculum. Uh, as I said before, we wanted to strengthen school home links, so have more collaboration with the families and bridge the gap with the wider uh, non-English speaking community. We also wanted to engage in creative ways of learning languages and more importantly, we wanted to have fun. <laughs> so now I'm going to pass it on to my co-presenters. Uh, Zoe, over to you. Thank you, Anaida, and um, good afternoon, everyone. I've been on a lot of these sessions, so it's lovely to be presenting um, today. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, first of all. So my name is Zoe Gordon, and I'm doing a dual role at the minute this year. Um, I was very fortunate to be seconded as the One Plus Two Development Officer for um, a year. This was meant to be the final year of funding in Scotland for the One Plus Two policy. However, we have just had really good news that the government have done a further investment, and so we're hoping that this role can continue on a bit longer for me and I'm also a primary teacher in Springfield Primary School and so therefore um, last year when I met in Ada, I was very keen to implement this within my own school. Where my um, language background comes from, I suppose um, back to being at high school myself and doing French and then I ended up having a gap year before I was going to go to be a teacher and I lived a year in Paris and that's where my passion for I suppose French and languages um, began and um, after a year in France I decided that I needed to have a um, to do something different at that time there were no languages spoken in primary schools um, or taught really so I changed my mind and I did um, a different degree I, I did French and Spanish with um, exporting and there I've used my languages in many many different careers but I um, about five or six years ago changed and went into teaching and I've been delighted to be able to use languages in my teaching and it is something that's a huge passion for me Springfield Primary School, our school in Linlithgow, so in the, the, the beautiful town of Linlithgow in between Edinburgh and Glasgow. We have about 350 pupils and about 14 classes with approximately 21 teachers. We have some part-time teachers. The, the classes that took part in this project for me were primary one, two, primary three, primary five and primary seven. So we had four classes. To be honest, almost all of them would have wanted to, but I had to, um, or we decided to make the decision that actually because the project was online and it was gonna be difficult as it was, we needed to just maybe pick a few. So we decided to go for the different stages um, within our school, which would just give us a bit more variety. The other um, teachers are aware of the project and will be doing part of the project independently. Our school is mostly monolingual. We have a few bilingual pupils and um, some multilingual parents and families. Um, and the other thing that we do with languages is we have primary five and um, from primary five up to primary seven, we have language ambassadors. And that's something I introduced into the school a few years ago, whereby um, they assist me with leading language learning and cultural learning within schools. So maybe doing assemblies, leading learning in their classes, different projects, etc. That's me. Thank you. So over to Arno, Mr. Casa. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Arno, and uh, I'm, I'm a teacher at Cadden Beef Primary School as well. And there I teach in you know, Spanish, health and well-being, uh, and RME as well. Uh, I'm interested in languages uh, because I, I find this is a way to connect with different cultures and different people. Uh, my language background is one that uh, I've lived uh, and studied in six different countries. So I was born in the Congo in Africa, where it's a Belgian Congo where they speak French, so kind of did my... Um, 
some of my schooling there. And I've also lived in the Czech Republic in Prague. And I did, I did the rest of my schooling there in France, in Ireland, and, and uh, as well as Scotland now. So I've kind of been interested in languages because it's for me, it's been a way to communicate and, and to, to learn about different cultures. And, you know, just uh, that, that it's all part of my identity, you know, uh, and, and I can see that with the, the, the pupils I work with that have a, a, a different language. And, and I've been that, that child before, so I can understand, you know, how they feel and, and how to, to engage with them. So that, that's my, my linguistic background. Uh, and French is my first language. And um, I, I did Spanish at university as well. And Anita was actually my lecturer. So that, that's the connection there as well. So we kind of carried on uh, our relationship professionally. So um, it's, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and, uh, and, and share my, my experience. And, you know, even though it's early in my career, you know, I've been teaching for two years now, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm keen to, to make, uh, to be an agent of change, you know, positively. Uh, Card and Beef, uh, they, they, we have uh, 24 pupils in that primary four class. And, and as previously mentioned, those, um, it's, it's a nurture school. So the reason why we went with one class, I, I worked with three different classes at school in that school, but the reason why we went with one class to, so that we could do the project well and you know just focus on the on the on the class that has the that has the most um you know bilingual children and and, and it was a good way to do it with that B4 class and, and you know they were very keen um to, to be part of the project, you know, meeting a need online as well. You know, it, it was something that they loved. You know, it's, it's something was out of the out of the ordinary. You know, normally, Edina would have come into the class if if it wasn't for the lockdown, but um, that was the only class that did the project. And I worked closely with the, the P4 teacher, so I come in and cover the non contact, and I take the class for R RME Spanish and um, and 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 the. Um, and health and well-being. So I, I spend the time with that class, but I work closely with the teacher as well, the, the, the P4 teacher, uh, to kind of make sure that the, 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 we made progress with, with the project. So, and, and that, that's, that's me, that's my introduction there. All right. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Arno. Thank you. So, translanguaging, what a really long word we have in the title of our project. The question of what is translanguaging is currently being debated by academics. So what I'm bringing you here uh, is a definition taken from Professor Ophelia Garcia and Professor Leeway that comes from the book, from this book, uh, um, Translanguaging Language, Bilingualism and Education, which is a book I highly recommend, especially because in addition to, to telling the story of translanguaging as a theory, it has a chapter or with examples of teachers using translanguaging as a pedagogy within their subject. So a highly recommendable book. So here we have this definition here that really helps us think uh, what is a multilingual brain? So what we want to demystify here is the fact that multilingualism equals two monolinguals in, in one. So it says here, there are no two languages that are cognitively activated or deactivated as the social and contextual situation demands, but rather, as we have proposed, a single array of disaggregated features that is always activated. So what this means uh, is, well, my understanding of it is that um, the multilingual brain is made up of a full linguistic repertoire. And in this repertoire that we have from which we draw both to make ourselves understood and to make meaning to understand the world, languages are intertwined. So there is no definition. It's not that you have one compartment here for English, one for Spanish, one for Russian or whatever language you speak, but rather that all the languages are interconnected together and then multilinguals take from that as they consider, as they, as they see fit, and also the um, semiotic part of it, you know, and we will talk a little bit about the embodiment of the language uh, with this uh, project, which is so, um, well, it's a multilingual performance, so we not only speak, but also we use gestures and we use our body to communicate. When we think about translanguaging as a pedagogy, translanguaging as a pedagogy really promotes creating safe spaces for home languages to make it to the classroom. So we plan activities where our pupils can come and use their languages. And not only that, they are pupil-centered in such that pupils often 
take center stage, they take over the teacher's role and they um, and they act as a teacher. So they show it and they and they and they and they teach their peers and their teachers. And this is something that is also happening with this um, with this project. So really, uh, translanguaging as a pedagogy challenges all traditional models and uh, pedagogies. And it really is is very it's a very inclusive way of teaching. And even if it is just for a short period of time, uh, a, a, a way to give spaces for all the languages that our pupils speak to come to the school at a, and, and, and share um, equal an equal status. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what's happened with our journey and our plans. So as I said earlier, Zoe and Arno and I met at the Scottish Parliament uh, back in November 2019. This is when uh, the school that took the pilot project was, was were performing for the third and last time. And after that performance, uh, so we had one in the school, we did have one in Glasgow, and then we had one in the Scottish Parliament, which if you don't know, is, is, is based in, in, in Edinburgh. And you know, after all this performance, we did have quite a few schools wanted to join the project. And the idea was to, you know, roll it out at a larger scale and then, um, show the multilingual performance during Languages Week Scotland, February 2021. This is the first week, but what happened is that in March 2020, we went, we went into lockdown and still we were, I, I was not sure as to how I was going to continue with the project. So Creative Multilingualism, which originally funded this project, Creative Multilingualism is, the, is this event where Joe and I met back in February 2019, was a four year uh, research project from the Arts and Humanities Research Council. And under the Open World Research Initiative, they funded Creative Multilingualism. So Creative Multilingualism gave a number of um, uh, funding, like six, allocated funding to six projects, and one of them is, is this one. <clears throat> and before it finished uh, in summer 2020, so this is last year, they did allocate a little bit more funding for the creation of uh, this webinar series that I don't know if Joe can um, share the, the, the link now, uh, if it is appropriate. And then, you know, so this is how I kept it going. But then, in summer 2020, again, second lockdown, and again, a lot of uncertainty. We didn't know what was going to happen. COVID was hitting us really, really hard. So the adjustment in that, at that point was really, we need to move the project fully online. And then in October, and in November, I did have meetings with Zoe, with Arno. Zoe brought in all her teaching force. So from uh, Springfield, we do have Zoe, who's the development officer as, uh, as well. So she wears two hats. And then uh, we have four teachers, P1, P2, uh, P1, P2, P3, P5, and P7. And then I met as well with Arno, who is bringing his P4 class, but also is working with a support teacher. So we did have all our meetings online and finally in December 2020, we started working uh, with, the, with the pupils and what a brilliant partnership this has been. So let me show you a little bit of the teacher's pack. What is your favorite lullaby or children's song? Can you make a drawing? Can you write the words? So uh, I have not managed this is uh, playing automatically. These two non-gender characters coming from outer space have uh, interrupted me. So this is stage one on, uh, of the project. And this part of the project, so the project is divided into three parts. Stage one is this preparation activities that are around the themes of language and identity. Then we have stage two, when we actually prepare and make up the multilingual performance. And then stage three is the multilingual performance itself. So this language and identity activities, what they seek is to uncover multilingualism, to find out what languages our people speak at home and with their extended family. So we discover what languages are, are, are spoken, you know, and we always have surprises when, when we complete this activity. So let me show you. So in this case, I joined these sessions uh, online uh, via Teams, all, all, all the project we've delivered uh, via Teams. But for this particular one, I didn't deliver it. I was there as an observer, it was the teachers who uh, with the PowerPoint, so the, the, the pack has, 
PowerPoint, teachers uh, and teachers guides. And then the PowerPoint has in the notes a timing and how to deliver the activity, the suggested activities uh, that you can then take away and make them relevant for your own class. So you tweak, tweak them and uh, you adapt them as you consider uh, necessary to better uh, serve the needs of your learners. So here, um, um, and the resources that we produce with uh, Cowden Beath and Springfield, we will share them at the end of the summer once the multilingual performance um, has been showcased. Showcased again. I don't know if Joe, you have access to the fix share link. If you would like to share it, that would be uh, amazing. So this. Um, um, activities do want to or do seek to make teachers lives uh, better. Yeah, to to make your to make your work slightly easier. So here the the characters have asked us, "What is your favorite lullaby or children's song? Can you make a drawing? Can you write the words? Can you make a drawing if you cannot write yet? Perhaps well, a drawing is the way forward. If you can write the words, uh, then if, if you have already <laughs> you can already read and write, then you do that. So from a uh, I would, I would like to do this for you. So these characters have asked me, what is my favorite lullaby or children's song? And they would like me to answer in my home language. Unfortunately, you cannot see the activities here because um, uh, the screenshot is, uh, is, is a bit blurred, but they want me to use my home language. So I'm going to answer, en casa yo hablo español. Mi canción favorita es la gallina turuleca. Y el estribillo es, <coughs> la gallina turuleca ha puesto un huevo, ha puesto dos, ha puesto tres. La gallina turuleca ha puesto cuatro, ha puesto cinco, ha puesto seis. And like that, this silly hen lays eggs everywhere in the house, but where it should, in the pen, yeah? So this is what happens with this, with this activity. Children come up with the songs that their mom or their granny or their grandfather or their uncle uh, sings to them. And this is how you really um, uncover what languages your, your um, uh, pupils speak. Uh, by the way, this is completely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Thinking for you. Um, uh, so then we do have another activity here. Uh, this is for the lower primary, for the youngest ones. But if we move on to the eldest ones, the question is slightly different. What is your favorite event, monument or, or celebration or the flora, fauna or climate of X place is? Again, these characters want you to uh, use your home languages. So you are going to produce a solid paragraph in that, in that home language, you are um, working towards your literacy skills and you are bringing in a very nice way. So I don't know, you can do the activity if the theme you're doing is a geography or if it is the weather, anything that you think uh, works, the, the purpose here is to plan, to plan the translanguaging activity. So this is an idea for you to take away, yes? Yeah? So what you do is to ask them, uh, write a paragraph about X. And this really, really, really uh, shows uh, or, um, gives you surprises. I'm going to pass it on to um, uh, Zoe and Arnaud because I think that they can share uh, about this a little bit, about what happened in our schools. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you for that. Was a lovely, that was a lovely song that you just gave us. Um, so my, my learners for me, so we, we, we did the activity and, and my learners, you know, they really enjoy the activity. And, and for the ones that do have an additional language at home that, that that really came through because you know it was a moment where you know they were proud to 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 kind of display you know their true identities and from that even the, the children that were scottish that didn't have a second language at home they were also really interested to find a little bit more on, on how to to say something in that language and from that moment i, I could see i noticed a, dra a drastic um change you know in in their engagement levels you know with the project and you know, with with all the the pupils you know bringing in the home language into school and um, it, it was about the language of also understanding the culture and, and wanting to find a little bit more so i would overhear some conversations so you know what kind of food do you eat at home like you know for those that were like uh, spoke urdu or those that spoke russians so so it, it was that moment where you know 
he's just created a, a nice culture in the in the in the classroom, you know. And and I think I've benefited from from that, and so have the learners. You know, they've benefited from learning another language, you know, finding out a little bit more about another culture and becoming a, a little bit more tolerant because you know they they they, they found out about you know their peers. So for me, you know, doing the activities, you know, we're able to uncover some some. Uh, some home languages that we didn't know about, even the, the, the teacher that spends, you know, the whole the whole week with them, she didn't know about it. Like, oh, I didn't know, the, you know, the, the, the parent could speak Portuguese. You know, the, the prep activity really, really, really helped us uncover those languages uh, at home and, you know, it enabled us to bring it into the classroom. And, and, and I really enjoyed doing the prep activity and so did the children. Yeah. Yeah, and similarly for me, so um, I really thought, and I was so excited to do this project, but I thought, this is going to be a bit boring for NIDA because Springfield is monolingual, hardly anybody speaks another language. And in the four classes, now considering we have 14, so I, I don't even know what else is out there, but in the four classes, we discovered languages that I had no idea. There were some children, for example, in primary three that I'd known since they started in school. And um, there was one wee girl um, who spoke Afrikaans. Now, I've never heard her speak a word of Afrikaans. I've never heard her mum speak Afrikaans. I didn't have any clue that that was their background. And suddenly she's standing there um, singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in Afrikaans for us. And my goodness, my heart was just like, and the, her teacher. So I knew her, but her teacher as well. And she stood and it was just incredible to see her grow just like in confidence and stature, like she literally grew in front of us. And she was delighted to share this. And I think sometimes these children don't tell many people maybe the extra things that go on at home. I don't know whether it's because they're shy or they just don't want to, but this project allowed them to stand there and be proud. And, and these primary threes who, you know, are seven and um, maybe some of them eight years old were standing talking about things and, and sharing and helping us learn songs together. And we had in, in the same class, a little Russian boy as well. And it's just, it was absolutely fantastic to know that at home they were using that language, but yet we had no clue. So for me, that was the key moment where I thought, actually, we're not monolingual. That's really good. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing there. What, what we see with the project and when we talk about uncovering languages that, you know, children, for some reason, as um, you were saying, they don't share it. So this bringing trans language in as a pedagogy, you know, and really creating a safe space for them to share their heritage, their language, their culture, um, uh, brings nice surprises. So let me continue a little bit more. So this is stage two, and this is uh, the stage where we, when I uh, was delivering a workshop uh, for, for the classes. So we started, uh, here it says hybrid via Teams and Home because uh, in the middle of it, we were, um, well, school uh, schools closed. So here we have some images of us uh, working remotely online. And I'm delivering the workshops in preparation for the multilingual performance. So before Christmas, we did manage to, before the winter break, we did manage two additional sessions. So we had done the language and identity um, session and then two sessions under um, collaboration. So, I'm not allowed to that I visit the school, but I'm here on Teams and the children absolutely adored it. And so did I. Uh, and what we are doing is, um, well, from the first stage, we have already gathered what languages our people speak at home. And also we have a rough idea of what their uh, favorite songs may be. So now is when we start the, with the lower primary, I'm going to focus on first. We are starting with the voting process, yes? So first of all, uh, because I, ha I already had, um, we already had an idea of the languages they, they spoke at home, I prepared some YouTube, some songs on YouTube, and then we asked them to close their eyes and to guess uh, what language it was. And again, uh, the child who had that uh, heritage, that home language, then they would stand up, oh, that's, uh, that's Urdu, that's Russian, that's Afrikaans, that's uh, Dutch, uh, etc. And the other kids were asking questions. So this is really when that metalinguistic awareness is really taking place in the classroom. So 
when we teach languages, sometimes for some learners is difficult to understand or to contextualize why are we teaching languages? Why do I have to learn language? Oh, because you get a better job or because when you travel and all of these are very valid reasons. But the transformative effect that it has for pupils to have one of their peers, maybe one of their, of their, of their wee friends saying, oh, you know, because I, I speak Russian, oh, and then they stand and then they teach them a word. That, um, that materialization of the language in the classroom is absolutely magnificent uh, uh, to see. So what happens when we get to this stage? This is when remote work uh, also happens uh, from home, from the families. So, uh, we do have the example of this girl in P3 who spoke, who speaks Afrikaans. We have already done a little bit of playing. We've listened to YouTube, we've covered our eyes. We, we know we are now completely certain of who speaks what. And then we ask them, would you like to, would you like to help in the performance? Would you like this to be in the performance? When it is teacher, um, not teacher center, but pupil center, pupils do have the last word. Pupils decide whether they want their language to make it or not. So we ask them, do you, yes, yes, okay, excellent. So what song? And then from all the voting, uh, funnily enough, in both schools, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was the, the, the winning um, song. Now, the, the um, range of songs available for people to, to choose from, my word of advice is that it is uh, limited in such that it is better that uh, we ask uh, families to produce uh, the words and also the lyrics, I will I will show you in a minute the singing the sung version of it, of a well-known song. If the multilingual performance, the celebration of languages, um, becomes a burdensome task, then it's not fun and we kind of defeat purpose. So what we want is for well, the conversation goes like this. So do you is does twinkle twinkle exist in Polish? Oh yes, it does. So I'm not sure. You know, we try to also that we do a little bit of research and try to to help the family, so they are not overwhelmed. But in any case, we have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We had uh, the spider one. We did have Old MacDonald had a farm as well. I can't remember in a few others. So if we are working with a traditionally British song, then it's quite unlikely that that song is exists in other languages, and we we would really try to avoid the translation. Um, having to translate. So this is what parents produce. Parents either send an email uh, with the lyrics and the reciting the words and singing the words, or they send a piece of paper and then, and then they send the audios. Let me show you. So this is the version for Africans and this P3 mom has already given us the, the words, which then I am, um, with which I am populating the resource that it is available for everyone on, on Fixture. And they also provide this. Skitter, skitter, kleine ster, wat is jij so hoog en ver? Aan die luchtse verste rand, soos a helder This is reciting, diamant. this is very important because it's not allowed to sing in schools these days. Skitter, skitter, kleine ster, wat is jij so hoog en ver aan die luchtse verste rand soos a helder diamant skitter skitter kleine ster Oké, okay. so this is more for the teachers and researchers and for the sake of producing more materials than for the children, because in reality, it is the children who teach everyone uh, in the class the, the words, and then between uh, all of them, they choose how to embody the language. This is uh, the, what I was mentioning at the beginning of the presentation as well. So what gestures am I gonna make? So the audience who do not possibly speak Dutch and Russian and Brazilian Portuguese and Urdu, et cetera, follow my message. Okay, I think that, I don't know um, if, uh, Arno or Zoe, I think that you wanted to uh, contribute something about this as well. Yes, yes, certainly. And uh, so we, we're able to, to to work collaboratively with the children and, and, and then the parents. So, you know, we created that, you know, that link between school and home and the parents were able to send us, 
you know, as I need as you showed there, you know, for, for my school, the parents were able to send us um, the, the lyrics and how uh, to recite, you know, some of the more challenging languages like Urdu or even Russian. So, and obviously we, we would go and also try and put that together so that we were able to, you know, to share it with the whole class. And, and on that note, I just wanted to add as well, you know, with the children being able to, to, to teach their peers, it, it was a moment where, you know, also improving their talking and listening skills as well and a lot of the ones that were really shy and as Zoe said earlier as well they were really shy about when it came to to kind of um, talk about their language and you know share share their identity there you know they, they would just come to life and and that was a good thing so we were collaborative with the parents and um we were able to to create that link between home and and for some of the, the pupils in my class in particular you know they, they were not so interested with with everything else but when it came to the project you know through the throughout the lockdown because we had to get to get everything sent in um you know uh by by email or you know just sending on teams so you know we, we got everyone involved and and the parents were, were really good with this and you know some of the parents that i hadn't even talked to before and you know they were able to create that link and create that relationship you know they, they would send they would send a video where you know maybe they they only be the video and no sound and like oh can you can you please send that again so even though we had some technical difficulties you know we we're still able to get there in the end and and create uh, the piece that we created um at, at the end of of, of the, the project there yeah, and I would echo that. And um, certainly our children were so excited, so excited to be doing something like this um, for their parents to be involved and to be sending in things. They were, I say, proud, as I said earlier, to share something from their home that maybe someone didn't know about them. And I was just really impressed as well at, at how willing the parents were to sing, to send us, you know, the words in. And really the, the quality was amazing. And we were, we got it so quickly. So um, I think that's impressive if we can do that going through um, COVID, imagine what we can do in a, in a normal environment as well. So yeah, they were just very excited, wanted to show off what they were learning and they loved the process and they loved working with Enaida on Teams as well. They, it didn't bother them that she wasn't physically there. They were very engaged with, with the whole process. Scooter? Yeah. And so was I really, really uh, engaged and, and, and delighted. So now we move on to this upper uh, primary. This is only um, Springfield uh, PS who's part, uh, whose classes are contributing to this, to this uh, part of the performance. And this is for the upper primary. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm sharing a screen with the pupils. I don't know if you can see, this is a script. And I'm here and then uh, the class uh, uh, is here. So you can see it on the left of uh, our shared screen. So with this level, we have also gathered info as to what languages that they speak at home. And what we are trying to do now is to find a story, a story that we want to, to tell. Again, it is better to not work from scratch, although the script drafting of the story is going to change fundamentally. It's going to be very different to the stories that uh, the initial story that everyone knows. For example, here we have the gingerbread man and the Jack and the Beanstalk. So the way we did this, when I, when I deliver the, the workshop for them again, I go on Teams and then we talk about the home languages and then I ask them, I say, okay, so um, let's do, let's tell a story, let's, what, what is our theater piece going to be? And then there are many, many suggestions. And once we have enough suggestions for everyone to vote, we go through a voting process. The voting process in one of the classes in the P5 one was uh, the gingerbread man and Jack and the Beanstalk for P7, which is your year six in uh, the English education system, is Jack and the Beanstalk. So the next thing we need to think about is how many pupils we have in the class and how many characters that actually exist in that story. And you will see here that we have, for example, cow plus one, cohorts plus one, pig plus one. So the pupils uh, joined together and instead of having one cow, we are going to have two cows, but both cows are going to say something. And this is how we start creating the dialogue. This is how they start really writing their own story. While this is happening, I'm sharing my screen and I am frantically typing and getting all, all, all their ideas in. And then I go home, I tidy up. Well, I go home now because I was always home because this is <laughs> delivered remotely. But you, see, you get the feeling because it's so, 
really teams has not been a barrier for us. It's not, um, it's, it's not we, we knew that we were doing this and it was projected in the big screen. Sometimes the children were sitting on the floor, sometimes they were at the table if they had to write something. Then they were grouping themselves as well to come with different storylines and sharing them into terms. It's really worked really, worked out really, really well. Um, virtually and then I would come back again for the second session and show them what I have um, to, to check on them that the, that the script drafting uh, uh, were, were going well and then this is at this stage when we do have a final script and we give the script to the families and then the families receive an email uh, and in the email it says um, introduce Welsh or introduce uh, the language, um, ex language, uh, German or Scottish Gaelic or Irish or Telugu, uh, etc. And I think that Zoe, you can also contribute something here. Yeah, th this part was fascinating for me. I didn't really understand when I joined the project how this part was going to work and I thought, how do they do the story? How do they do it for the upper children? And this this part was really interesting. So they took the story, as any Enida said, and they made it their own. Now, some of the interesting twists in the story, um, yeah, are, are, they are um, they're different, okay? And that's why it's unique. It's for the children, and they need to be involved because when they're involved, then they just they want to be doing that. They could not wait. This photo is the primary fives when I got them in December just before Christmas. This is them coming to have a wee practice with the script. They were so excited. Is it my turn? Is it my turn? And, and I was taking them out to have a little practice. Um, and what was so nice about it was they, they, they could change the story and make it what they wanted. Now, sometimes they got a wee bit carried away. The primary sevens in Jack and the Beanstalk, they, they decided to go for a story where Jack was on his own because his two parents had been allergic to milk and then they had both died. So we kind of decided that we maybe needed to step in a little bit there and, and help, um, you know, encourage them that, do we think this could really happen in real life? Is it realistic that they would both have a milk allergy and then both die? And, and so we changed the story slightly. But again, it was them. It, was, it wasn't us saying, you can't have this. You know, Anaida did it in such a way that um, the children themselves went, oh, no, yeah, you're right. Let's change it. Um, and that was lovely because, again, and they're contributing, they're making it. So when it comes to them telling the story, they're part of it. The language side of it was fascinating as well. And we had, for example, in primary five, there was a, someone that was going to do Welsh and they realised that the Welsh part was just going to take it a bit too far. So the confidence they had in the language and um, the relative, I think it was the grandfather, it was just not going to make the connection to get that through to us. So we changed it. And actually, in actual fact, another pupil in the class had seen everybody else delivering their parts and had said to her mum, could we not do this in Italian? and got in touch with the granny who lived in Italy and the granny was happy to help out and so now we have Italian in instead so it's been a, a project that you know it was fluid as, as an NA just said we had to change a lot of things we had to adapt you know every time there's been a change something else has come in and that's just what makes it so interesting so we've really gained a lot from this and they have as well. Yeah, it's very fluid, uh, what you say, it's very organic, uh, the project. So the very last thing, um, two more things from us before we go. So as we said, in Christmas, uh, we went into lockdown again and we couldn't really continue with uh, our plan to um, uh, perform for uh, Languages Week Scotland. So what we did was so we really asked ourselves, is there any point in asking pupils to learn their parts? And then we do it remotely as we were going to do it because um, when we do the multilingual performance, it's going to be delivered online. It's going to be delivered virtually, but this is very different from removing the aspect of the pupils supporting peer learning by teaching the language. So we thought, no, possibly we, we can't, we can't uh, this defeat purpose. We cannot really do that. So I want to share with you a wonderful excerpt of the two videos that Zoe and Arno uh, prepared in collaboration with participating families. If you have, maybe you have even seen them on Twitter before. Um, I cannot emphasize enough uh, the remote the remote element whereby schools were still open for some children, 
and families were continuing sending their lyrics for um, the lower primary and their script for, for, for L2. So we, there, there has been a complete like virtual uh, communication. It's, it's, a, it's a fully uh, digital uh, project all the time ongoing. So let me, let me show you. Yes, me is a Chinese school in Springfield, Lynn Lithgow. Hi, we're from Springfield Primary School in Lynn Lithgow. We love languages! We love languages! We are in the cover project of Union. We have been creating a multilingual performance. Old Hano Sung. In, we will be singing in Russian, French, Espanol, Spanish, Afrikaans, Yehuski, and Russian. Be amid exchanging us. Russian, French, Espanol, Spanish, Deutsch, German. Polski, Polish. Ruski, Russian. Gaelic. Zewitz and Barton. You will have to wait. Zuhaisi na czego przedstawienia jeszcze trochę dłużej. A little longer to hear our performance. Na kogo stoit podaždać? It's worth waiting for. So this is what we produced and I'm passing over to Arno and um, Zoe for last comments. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask people to go to www.menti.com with this code. Because there is a little exam for you guys. <laughs> and, and I must say, even look, watching that again now, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's just nice to see, you know, children you know, being confident in languages, you know, and, and I can personally relate to that because, you know, of, of, of my background, you know, having lived in so many different countries and, you know, learning different languages, it's, it's just such a nice experience. Uh, and I personally think, you know, those children that will grow to become, you know, very global citizens and, and just open to, to different cultures and different languages again. And, um, and, and we're excited to, to, to hopefully have the actual performance, you know, when, when the, the, the restriction can allow us. And, and, and I've enjoyed being part of, uh, you know, co-hosting with Anita today. And, and it's been great. Everyone has been you know, looking at the comments there. Everyone has been very supportive and, and, and saying good things about the project. And, and I hope also that, you know, we, we could maybe take this on a, on, a bigger, on a bigger scale all over Scotland. Maybe why not over the UK? So... <laughs> Well, over Scotland, there is quite uh, there is a queue of schools. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and just to add to that, I mean, um, the video that we made, our parents were so impressed. They they were like, wow, I didn't realise you were doing all this. And um, the children were so um, 
pleased to be involved that like when you asked them to do it they were delighted and I had you'd have seen some of the children doing the French and Spanish they were children in school so they were in the hub during lockdown so they were um you know the children that had to be in school when the others were at home and they were delight they weren't even some of them part of the project and they were like can we do the video and I said okay so we chose the the two languages that we use for um L2 and L3 and within our school which is French and Spanish and I got them to do that part so I just thought it was really nice to involve them as well um, and it has it's been an amazing project and we just can't wait to do our performances so we hope to get back to to the acting after Easter and um, for their, our older children and to the um, not singing we still can't sing yet um, but we can still learn those words and hopefully we will get a performance in for you very soon yeah okay so that's fantastic thank you so much are you guys on Mentimeter yet Yeah, let's see, I'm going to share with you. Oh, I can see that people are already voting. And I would like to share this with you. Uh, here we go. So the first question is, how many languages did you hear? Okay, so I'm going to give you two more seconds. Okay. Some people, well, most of the people are going for nine. Great. That is a correct answer. We do have another question. This one is a bit more complicated. What were these languages, these nine languages that we heard? and see your answers. Ah, we are starting German, Gaelic, English, ooh, Spanish, French, Polish, yes. Okay, so the languages we've heard are Afrikaans. Ooh, we have it there, excellent. English, yes, French, yes, Gaelic, yes, German as well, Irish. Irish, Irish, we have it there as well. Polish, very well. Russian, excellent. And Spanish, great. And the very last question I have for you today is, how do you say hi in Russian? Ooh, people are answering really quite fast. Great for people have voted. Cheers, Privet, hoy. Two more times. And that is a correct answer again. We do say Privet in Russian. That's great. Thank you so much for participating. So this really is um, our last um, our last slide here. Please watch this space because our only online multilingual performance uh, will be out before the end of the academic year. We are uh, we have plans to resume after Easter, and that's all from us. If you want to continue the conversation, I I don't know if we've spoken over time. If we have apologies, uh, yes, and we'll be delighted to answer your questions. Thank you so much for inviting us. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I'm absolutely blown away by uh, by the project. And uh, yeah, as people are saying in the chat, you'll see people are saying they're loving it. They're finding it inspiring. I think that the way that you um, took um, the, the project and put it on Teams and made it all work online has been superb. So thank you so much and well done for this, this really, really awesome project. And I hope that other people watching this will will replicate the same ideas and try it out in their own context because it's been... It's been really, really, really genuinely inspiring. So yeah, awesome. We've only got the one question, if it's okay. So I thought we'd do that and then we'll do, give you a, a very much deserved round of applause, all of you, which was, um, we had a question from Diana saying, uh, since there are so many languages, could you tell us a little bit about how you went about assessment? Was there any assessment involved or was it just about celebrating languages essentially? Yeah. 
this project is a celebration of multilingualism and home languages. And what we are interested in doing is creating spaces for children to come and share with their peers, to come and share with the teachers and use their home language in the, in the school context in a, with planned activities, no assessment. Lovely. And we've got another question. Thank you so much. We've got another question from Karina. For schools that are very monolingual, how could this be carried out? What, what advice would you give? You want me to say something, Anna? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I think the answer is my school is monolingual. I thought it was. You'll be surprised. Try honestly. The the children in my school. I was. We have very few children from other backgrounds, as far as I knew. But there were people in their families. When you dug a little bit deeper, and you definitely found some. Um, and worst case, I knew I had my two languages that we spoke in, in school anyway, my French and my Spanish. But we've discovered so much more. And even actually relating to the last question, we had to cut back a couple of languages because primary one and two could not have coped with the number of languages that we had found in their class because to learn learn all of those to sing twinkle twinkle it was going to be too much so we stuck with four but we could have done six or so and it's the same in primary three because we had one little boy who has three additional languages within his background mum's one language dad's another grandmother's another and he lives here in scotland it was incredible yeah that's i love the uh, the, uh, the the tale around the uh, italian granny as well the fact that yeah that were oh, just brilliant I'm going to hand over to Helen now because I'm sure that she's going to gush and gush and gush as well and talk about um, how, how lovely it was hearing uh, Aneda um, singing in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in the target language as well. So over to you, Helen. Gush yes. away. Well, I'm going to gush away and I'm sure other people want to gush as well. I just thought it was fantastic. I could tell from the description beforehand I was going to enjoy it. <laughs> you all three of you, um, you presented beautifully. It really was lovely to, to see your enthusiasm and also to hear your accents as well. You yourselves represented quite a range there, <laughs> all with that lovely bit of Scottish Scottish bit of it as well, so it's lovely. But yes, I mean, the use of music is such a good thing, isn't it? And so hear that being done it was it was moving Sonia said that as well there was something very moving about the stories that you were telling about what happened um you know and and yes we don't need to be assessing this do we it really is we're just wanting to let them enjoy languages and you obviously enjoyed it as well that was the thing that, that really came across and if you're enjoying it and you've got enthusiasm you know you're going to bring your children along with it as well aren't you so um yeah, and just as a you know, as a personal anecdote, I I have learned Italian through being an avatar in Second Life, where my Italian teacher did just what you're doing. She said, "Right, we're going to make up our own story. You tell me what you'd like to have in it," and she then produced brilliant Italian, which we then went away and acted, and then we we did it. So, lovely, lovely method there. So, thank you so much again. Thank you, Joe, for inviting you along. That was just such a treat. Lovely, and we'll open up everybody's um. Uh, video I know not everybody always are in they're not always in a position to show video but if you'd like to um show yourselves that would be great for me to be able to take a little picture of us all that would be nice there's Diana and um so it's lovely to see you all and let's get ready to take a little picture we've got Alexandra she managed to stay with us yes. lovely there we are all the familiar names and Claudia, I think, all the way from Germany, yes. So I'll take a little picture of us then. After three, one, two, three. There we are. It's great. And each time with our hair just that little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sonia had her eyes shut, so I'm going to do it once more. Oh. Right. <laughs> Sonia, keep your eyes open. Okay. <laughs> goes, and one, two, three. And oh no, you did it again, Sonia. Come on. Oh, come on. Helen, don't put Sonia on the spot. Just okay. Keep One smiling. More just keep smiling. I'm not going to tell you when it is. Just smile. <laughs> Wait until Sonia. And we've got her. Hey. Catch her by surprise. You. You. <laughs> you. That's lovely. Sonia, yeah. if you want to open up your, your uh, mic as well, because you particularly were joining in and saying how brilliant it was, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you'd like to, Sonia, it was. I thought, yeah, I thought it was fascinating the way that you were saying, Sonia, you hadn't heard of the project before. Isn't is doesn't that show how important it is that you share as much as possible? So yes, we I can. Hadn't, I hadn't heard. Yeah. And I, I absolutely loved it, and I'm going to get in touch with all of these wonderful people afterwards because they're sort of preparing the students that I'm going to get in in secondary school, and that's 
I mean, that's wonderful. And um, I don't know who said it, but the fact that we often don't know how many people have, you know, more language backgrounds and that we need to celebrate that in order to make them continue with the languages. I think there's often a battle in secondary when they're sort of over it. But um, yeah, your, your, one, your approach was so moving. I, I was trying to get my son to not hit the, the, the computer all the time. It's so wonderful. So, so thank you. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. And Alexandrina, lovely to see you as well. Remind us where you're from. You're muted at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, good evening. Um, I come from Bulgaria. Um, and I teach English <laughs> as a second language. Mm. Yeah, it's been lovely to um, see you at these events. It'd be lovely to have um, you in EWL. Thank you for the invitation. Mm. We like to have people from Bulgaria. Was it three, <laughs> three hours? Three hours difference, did we say you were, I think? So uh, this is what, quite what a, time? What time is it there now? It's, so it's 4.45 here, 4.45. Two, two hours difference. Two hours difference, yes. right. Yeah. Not so much. Much. Oh yes, yeah, so we're in British summertime now, aren't we? So. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And talking of British summertime, I mean, it's, it's a glorious day here today. But so it's fantastic that we've recorded this session because I'm sure we'll get lots of people. I, I'm certainly, I'm sure other people will, well, as well, will be tweeting about how amazing it, you know, it has been afterwards. I was tweeting as well as Sonia during the session. But I'm sure um, if people have uh, gone out and had a lovely walk in the sum, uh, summer weather, they they'll be able to enjoy the recording afterwards because it is really, really inspiring. So I'm so delighted that we've recorded it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much to everybody for, for, for making such a great webinar. And thanks. And we had a couple of people on YouTube as well. So awesome. we're about to I'll end the stream and end the recording, shall I? No, so cool. End the stream and end the recording. Stop.